Ford High School Weekly is brought to you by your Oklahoma Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Oklahoma. And by Rib Crib, smoking good stuff since 92. Welcome to Ford High School Weekly. I'm your host, Dion Amade. The Oklahoma Ford dealers presented the Jinx Union Invitational Basketball Tournament on your view last week. Edmund North's Lacey Still, the tournament MVP, led the Huskies in the girls' championship game with 17 points in their 43-26 win over U. Booker T. Washington's Lathan Boone scored 22 points, 16 of them coming in the fourth quarter, and the Hornets' 61-48 win over top-ranked Jinx for the boys' championship. Booker T. Washington's Cam Parker was named tournament MVP. Now, while we're in the basketball frame of mind, let's meet Tulsa Memorial's Ty Frierson. Ty, how's it going, big dog? Going good. How about yourself? How's the season going so far? Uh, it's going. It's going good right now. Thirteen and one. I feel you. I feel you. That, <laughs> that, that one is hard to come by. So, mm -hmm. how y'all dealing with that? We trying to, you know, get right back and we trying to. I don't know. It's really trying to get right back in the uh, gym. Get in the gym way more. I feel you. I feel you. Well, what we like to do here on Ford High School Weekly is we like to get to know the player before we get into the, you know, what happens on the hardwood. So you mind if I, we ask you a couple of personal questions, you tell us which one you like better. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Kind of, kind of, kind of. Now bear with me now. <laughs> I got you, I got you. First, first one, holiday season. Now, which holiday do you prefer? Christmas or Halloween? And tell me why. Christmas is because you know the presents, and now I'm older. Now I be you know gotta I gotta give some to my little niece, my niece and stuff. Gotta give a lot of stuff away. I hear you. I hear you. So so if if I'm asking which gift was the best you got this year, uh, PS5. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> you a gamer? Yeah. All right. That kind of ties into my next question. Now, like when you're chilling, you and your friends, or or you and some 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 of the guys you hang out with. What do y'all do to relax? Y'all playing video games? Y'all watching movies? What do you do? 2K. 2K? <laughs> and we uh, get on YouTube and watch Boss Life mixtapes. So we see who the best mixtapes, you know, find who the best mixtapes. I feel you. I feel you. All right. Let's go ahead and get down to it. And you know your, your teammates are going to be watching this. Yeah. 2K player. It's really me. It's me, but I, know, I, see, see, I knew I had to ask this. Who's the best 2K player besides you? Me. me uh, let me see. I'm gonna give it to I'm gonna give it to Keith. I'm gonna give it to Keith. Keith, all yeah. right. So to sh shout out to Keith. He, he he got it on the stick. <laughs> all right, go ahead and answer me this question. I know you rock the number eleven, but what is your favorite number? Because I know I know in AAU you were you rock a different number. So what's your yeah. personal number? And go ahead, tell me why. My favorite number is number four. Uh, Cause I've been growing up with since so I was playing Mitchell and Mitchell, but now number eleven. We can't uh, Memorial don't do single numbers because it's just a team, it's team ball. That's why you, you know what I'm saying. But I wear number eleven because Kyrie is. The, that's why. So so what, what's the what's the meaning behind four? Is it just the first number you always wore, or what? Something yeah. you always thought looked good. What, what's yeah. the reason behind it? Nobody had it in AU. Nobody just picked four. They was always picking like number thirty or twenty three or something like that. They just I always liked the four. So you just want to be an individual, start your mm -hmm. own trend, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. All right, when we come back, we'll talk more with Ty, and we'll get to, to know him more about basketball and everything going on over there at Memorial. Welcome back to Ford High School Weekly. We're talking with my man Ty, the superstar over there at Memorial. Now, Ty, how's it going? It's going good. All right, so basketball season's underway. Y'all doing your thing over there, per usual, over there at Memorial. So, in, in your opinion, how is the basketball tradition over there, and, and what sets you guys apart? Uh, you like what sets us apart, like from other other uh, teams? Yeah. Uh, we all we play together. It's like, cause like if you come in here, you know you're gonna play together. Like you, it's all it's like a brotherhood. You know, it's like it's not no single person. It's like. It's all us, all together. It's we. So, how do they kind of implement that when y'all are going to it as a, as freshmen and coming into the program? How do how do you get taught that in in a in a very specific way? Okay, it's like uh, oh my upper the upperclassmen and stuff. Like you can see, like Caleb when I had Caleb and Keelan here, they just you just look up to the seniors. So you just see they they all about team first. So and all the other all the alumni coming back and 
see it in all that's a lot of alumni come back for scrimmages. They just talk about how the team, they talk about how the best team and stuff. So I'll just we try to be the best team here right now. I like that. I like that. So the so the older guys teaching the younger yeah. guys are kind of going down that that that's path. What? I like that. I like that. So speaking on you personally, how 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 did you find your way to the basketball court? Uh, I've been playing since I was three. My mom, my mom used to put me in the Y, and I used to always, I just, my brother used to take me around the court, around the, like to the court. I used to watch him play on his, sitting on his go kart. You know, I used to watch. That's what made me play basketball. I wanted to play. I used to be outside dribbling, so like all day, until I got better at it. I just, I don't know. Everything since I was three, I've been been playing basketball. So was there any other sport that you that you also like to play, or how did or, and how did that kind of fizzle out? Football, I was good at football, but Memorial football, and then not this. I just and Memorial football kind of they not that good. It's not not that good how it was. Now I just I was rather play basketball now because I'm better. I'm I was better at basketball, but I was really better at football. But basketball just but I was just I liked it basketball and my size and stuff. So right. so that's so that's your true love. That's your true passion is what yeah. you're trying to say. Yeah. So so with that being said, like what kind of made you grow that passion? Uh, it's really AAU. It was AAU made me want to play more like because it's, it's like it's really all year round. You can play anywhere. Like, you can, maybe so play. What, what was it about AAU? Was it the competition? It's was the, it it's traveling? The, yeah, traveling, the hotels, the crowds when they all the. The other team moms yelling at you, talking trash, and all that. Like everybody close on the court stuff. So, what what team do you play for with AAU? Uh, back then, I played Mitchum League, but now I play I play with Tim Griffin my last year. Yeah, so y'all got a squad over there. I, I've been seeing y'all. This <laughs> is a really good AAU basketball team, huh? Mm-hmm. So, who are some of the guys that you play with in AAU? Uh, Chase Martin from Jinx, Nawaso, Caden Fry, and Ben Aver from Jinx. Um, Three Texas guys. From, I'm, I'm a real last name. So, so how is that? Because I mean, basketball is an unusual sport in the high school level, where it's not, unlike football or other sports where you play year round with individuals that you got to play against during school ball. So, mm-hmm. so how is that when you face off against teams like Jinx, who you have team teammates that are on those teams? What's it like? Um, me and me and Chase have been playing a, for a long time. Me and Caden been playing. Well, me and yeah, me and Caden been playing against each other for a long time. But it was it was fun having them on. It was all night. It was good. Is it more competitive when you see those guys on the on the other side of the court? Do y'all guys um, do y'all talk a little trash? Like what? Yeah, what's the definitely yes. Yeah, we talk a lot of trash. We just put a Wasso on uh, TOC tournament champions, and we was talking a lot of trash. We beat them. We two and zero with them. And Chase, we haven't played them yet, but we scrimmaged them. It was a good game. We didn't talk. Me and Chase didn't talk trash though. <laughs> but it, it, so after the it's, game, does it, uh, do you guys take it a take it a little, you know, tougher losing to your friends, or is it one of those things where you guys, after the whistle is done, everybody's cool and everybody's chill about it? Nah, I, 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 uh, I made them feel me after, after the game. After the, after we beat them every time. Every the only person we would be was Amarillo. We played them in te, uh, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State summer the uh, team camp, and we played them. And they we beat they they beat us in the championship game. That's the only people I couldn't talk trash to. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. Well, when we come back, we'll hear more from Ty here on Ford High School Weekly. Ford High School Weekly is brought to you by Billy Sims Barbecue. It's not just barbecue; it's Boomer Q. Welcome back to Ford High School Weekly. We're talking with the man, the myth, the legend, Ty Frierson over there at Memorial. Now, Ty, what motivates you on the court? And now, now I'm talking about those times where the game gets a little tough, you get tired. What's your motivation out there? Um, really, it's really my my brother. I just do it for him every time I get on the court. You know? So, what's that relationship like with your brother? Um, he passed away when I was when I was four, but I was I don't know. I just I just do it for him all the time. Every time I'm on the court. So as far as uh, playing the game of basketball and playing with the with Memorial, what what can we expect from you guys this year and the remainder of the season? 
uh, humble and playing together and winning, trying to win championship. That's what we try. So what's it gonna take for you guys to capture another gold ball? Uh, defense, defense, really. It's all, all it is defense and, and layups and that's really just defense. We just gotta make our, you know, be humble. Like last year we was not, I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna lie, we was not humble at all. Like we, after the games, we'll win, get on Snapchat and post, and got lost, I'm like, we, we, do all that. we ain't doing that this year. So do you take it, as a challenge personally to to go ahead and, and take care of that business and make sure your teammates are that way yes i do i see somebody doing all that all that posting and stuff on snapchat that we win we just i tell them to chill out like listen make folk really gotta listen to coach that's all so have you always been like that personally or is that is was there a, a moment in time or a specific moment that kind of Change your mentality and made you be that way. Uh, Armor, Armor game. Like we was like that that game. We wasn't focused at all. The the we had our little our JV our JV guys. We was laughing, laughing around, playing around and stuff. Posting on Snapchat before the games on the phone, and thinking of thinking of another team. We had to. We was not right. We was not in our right mind. We was thinking of somebody else. Another. We was thinking about the next game before. Like. We should have been thinking about that game. We wasn't thinking about this. We thought everybody's gonna be easy. It ain't easy. So it was, so after that moment, it kind of it, it switched yeah. for you, or did it switch for the team that this is something that we got to take seriously and, and move past and and get serious about? Yeah, everybody we've seen each other cry. We didn't want to see each other cry no more. That's that's one thing we, that changed everybody. Yeah, when some tears start flowing, it'll, it'll change a lot. It'll change a lot of people's mindsets. Yeah, people that you never see cry before you. Uh, uh, hit. All right. So, so for you as an individual, I know you have a lot of team and and and, and big group oriented goals. But I mean, you as an individual, what do you kind of want to get accomplished this year in this season? Uh, trying to break the assist record. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to do that because that's anybody can do points. Anybody can try to do points. I'm trying to get average. I'm trying to average more assists this year than more points. I can show. I showed I can score the last two years. So I can. I can play defense and pass the ball way more and set my team up. All right. Now that you say that, so do you know what the actual number is? Uh, no, I don't. The Max Preps is working on it. We we trying to, you know, I'm trying to get the. They got the points on there. I'm almost, I'm almost to a thousand. I ain't played my freshman year. I'm almost to a thousand. But I'm, I'm not worried about that though. I, can, I know I can get that. I'm just trying to get some assists. Like, I hear you. I hear you. So that kind of leads me to my next question. That's something that I just started thought about when you said you wanted that assist record. So as far as players, I mean, I know like NBA, college. Who who's the kind of player that you mirror your game after? Uh, Kyrie. Why so? It's because like he can he can always handle the ball, but like and it's kind of James Harden too because I like how he, how he passes. But now I can see how he can score anytime he want, and then he can pass it good. He can get triple doubles and stuff like that. But I like Kyrie because he can get to anywhere he wants to at one like one move if he has to. Like he can get anywhere on the court. If he wants. So, uh, so with that being said, what's what's next for you? I mean, how's how's recruiting going, and who who are some of the schools that are looking at you? Uh, NSU, NSU, and Roger State they offer me, and um, Cali from uh, JUCO they offer me, and it's a lot of. I ain't got no D ones right now. No D ones looking at me right now. Just just JUCOs and D twos. Hey man, you get that assist record. I bet you that change real quick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so as far as basketball and 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 going far with it, what do you what do you what is your ultimate goal? Go to the NBA. So point blank period. So is 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 basketball something that you see yourself doing in, in the future for forever or, or what do you want what do you want to do after basketball uh, I'm, I'm still working on a plan b i ain't got no plan b right now <laughs> well, I mean, as, as, as good as you passed and shoot the rock man yeah. <laughs> I, I like plan a yeah <laughs> yeah like, well, Todd, thank you so much for joining us here on Ford High School Weekly, man. And good luck to to the rest of, to you and the, the Memorial guys over there. And good luck with the rest of the season. Thank you. There's another signing day next week. Michael Knight's up next to give us a preview when Ford High School Weekly continues. Okay. 
Welcome back to Ford High School Weekly. And you guessed it, guys. Signing day is coming up, so you know we have to go ahead and talk with the one, the only, Michael Knight from Prep Red Zone. Michael, how's it going? It's going good, man. It's a busy time of the year, but it's a good time of the year, especially for these high school kids about to sign on the dotted line. Yes, they are. Now, we already talked about an, a, a, a signing day before, and now we have another one. So for our viewers who don't really understand the circumstances that we're you know, in in the high school world, what's the difference between the two signing days for these you know, high school seniors that are getting ready to you know, line, sign their letter of intent to, to go play at the next level? Yeah, so for, for those who don't follow recruiting and recruiting news as closely as I do, uh, first off, I envy you because sometimes it can be a headache. But uh, the two signing days for football, specific college football, uh, there's one in December, which that started a few years ago uh, before for years and years. This was the only signing period. That first Wednesday in February was the only time that uh, football players could sign with their future colleges. Um, but now they have the early signing period in December, and that's primarily for Division I signees. So I think you, you'd see you know, 95% of the kids who signed back in December, uh, those are with Division I programs. And then now the guys that are going to be signing uh, on Wednesday, the first, February, or first Wednesday in February, those are going to be primarily JUCOs, Division II schools. We'll still have plenty of D1 signees especially here in Oklahoma as well. Uh, but the, the majority of them are going to be uh, signing with those lower level colleges. So speaking of some of those kids that are going to be signing uh, in the first Wednesday in February, who are some of the notable individuals around the state that you've kind of been keeping a close eye on and kind of kind of know where they're going to land? Well, the top prospect in the state is Gentry Williams from Booker T. Washington, and he's the guy who you and I talked about with the first signing day rolled around, him not signing with the Sooners because Brent Venables had just been hired there. Uh, he had just filled out his staff. Gentry decided he wasn't going to sign in December. He wanted to get to know the new coaches and get to know how they were going to run and just get more familiar with them. And uh, he actually just announced uh, today, as we're recording this, that he's going to stay firm uh, to his commitment with OU, and he does plan on signing with the Sooners. And I think I said that back in December. I, I was going to be surprised if he ended up somewhere else. Um, but, you know, I, I think that that's a good get for OU, uh, landing one of the top DBs in this part of the country, obviously defensively. You know, defensive backs and the secondary has been an issue at times uh, in terms of in-state recruiting for OU. So landing Gentry Williams on the dotted line is a big deal. And then another one is Max Brown, Lincoln Christian quarterback. This one came from kind of out of nowhere. He's been yeah. committed to Central Michigan for a while now. And all of a sudden, over the weekend, he was offered by Florida. Mm -hmm. And then shortly after that, he decommits from Central Michigan. And at that point, you're like, okay, the writing's on the wall. He's going to end up in Gainesville. And sure enough, uh, shortly after decommitting from Central Michigan, he announced his commitment to the Florida Gators. So all of a sudden, leaking Christian quarterback Max Brown is headed to the SEC to play for the Florida Gators. Uh, that one... You know, I, I cover this stuff, you know, 24-7, 365. I'll admit that one surprised me. I, I saw that one on Instagram, and I was kind of uh, thrown back by it as well. I was like, wow, I know the kid's good, and I, I know he's, he's very talented, but I did not expect the Florida offer to be coming, you know, out of nowhere in the last minute. But last question before we go ahead and get out of here, any more college news or individuals that, that – still everybody's kind of waiting on or curious where they're going to go or anybody that you're, you're interested to see where they end up. One of the biggest names is Barry Hill offensive lineman, Davis Dotson, a uh, really good looking kid. Um, he's been recruited by several D1 programs. Oklahoma State has jumped in on him late here. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see where he goes. Um, but he's probably the, the most highly regarded, you know, uh, recruit, uh, in the 2022 class. But then, as I mentioned earlier, this upcoming signing day is more for the smaller colleges. And I just got to say something right now. NSU, Northeastern State and Tahlequah, has done a fantastic job 
recruiting in-state prospects with this 2022 class. Uh, based on their commitments, it, it's going to be a fantastic class for the Riverhawks if they go ahead and get all those kids to sign on Wednesday. NSU has done a fantastic job uh, recruiting the state over the last six weeks to get some of the best athletes that there's going to be some guys that are playing in Tahlequah that have Division One talent, and they're playing for NSU. I think that program is going to turn around in a hurry. Yeah, man, I'm right there with you. I got some friends in the coaching staff over there at NSU, and they do a good job of recruiting in the state of Oklahoma. And let's hopefully that trend continues because we uh, we want to see those Riverhawks win out here. Yeah, I mean, look, I, if, if you're not able to go to one of the D1 programs, I'm always going to push, you know, the in-state small college programs that make it a priority on recruiting Oklahoma. UCO has done that. We're looking at NSU doing it now. So uh, hopefully with all that in-state talent at the next level in Tahlequah, they're able to uh, win some big games on Saturdays moving forward. Yeah, shout out to Coach Zach Allen. He's a yeah. buddy of mine, and he's doing a good job out there. There's no doubt about it. Absolutely. Well, Michael, for everywhere they want to find you and Prep Red Zone, where do they go? Check us out on PrepRedZone.com slash Oklahoma. We'll have plenty of signing day coverage as well as the month of February. We're updating all of our prospect rankings, starting with that senior class that are signing uh, on Wednesday with the 2022s. We will be updating our prospect rankings throughout the month of February. So now's a great time to check us out on PrepRedZone.com slash Oklahoma. Well, thank you again, Michael Knight, for joining us, and we'll talk to you here soon. Looking forward to it, man. Always fun. Back by Burke. Direct snap to Presley, right side. Oh, it's Kirby up there block, helping block for him. He's got a first down and more. He's going to be gone. Be sure to go to yourview.com slash OK for highlights and replays of the fourth game of the week. And check out our podcast and past episodes at yourview.com slash OK. Remember, only the best in Oklahoma make it to Ford High School Week. So thank you for watching, and until next time, I'm Deanna Mate. Ford High School Weekly has been brought to you by your Oklahoma Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Oklahoma. And by Rib Crib, smoking good stuff since 92.